everyone, Steven here from Radolescence with another fragrance review. And this time we have a fragrance from the indie niche house, The Scent of Departure, and the fragrance is called Vienna. Now, Vienna is a fragrance that was released in 2011. The perfumer behind this house is none other than Gerald Gislein, who also happens to be the mastermind behind the Histoire de Parfum house. So he is, of course, no stranger to the niche branch of the fragrance industry. He composed every other fragrance in that line. He also composed every fragrance in the Scent of Departure line. So he has been very hard at work lately, and his contributions to the niche branch of the fragrance industry are really shining through and showing off. So very well done, and congratulations on your continued success. Um, this was one of the first releases from the house. Uh, when the house was first established, they had five or six compositions. Um, right now to date they are up to 19 fragrance releases so very hard at work lately but this was one of the first five or six uh, so released in 2011 and this is of course named Vienna now it's named after the city of Vienna which also happens to be the capital of Austria and Austria is a German speaking country I believe German is the official language and they are located in Central Europe now before I move on the concept behind this house for those of you who may not know is that instead of having to pay, and this is the premise, instead of having to pay hundreds of dollars, if not probably well over a thousand dollars on a plane ticket to visit a distant country and have an olfactory journey of that country while being in it, you can spend 45 American dollars on a 50 milliliter eau de toilette. And uh, this fragrance is supposed to capture the essence of that particular country. So instead of having to pay hundreds, if not thousands of dollars to visit a country, you can spend a fraction of that cost and you still get to experience the olfactory characteristics of that country. Now, I do think that that warrants one to kind of, you know, take the physical trip out there just to confirm the accuracy or validate the accuracy of that claim that this fragrance does indeed smell like that country. But again, that would be the pricier alternative. This is the more inexpensive alternative. I'll stick with the latter. I'll stick with the cheaper alternative. So of course, this is named after the city of Vienna. Um, I think that this was a very well-selected city to kind of model a fragrance after. There are other cities within the country of Austria that I think, in my personal opinion, would have been suitable candidates just because there are other well-known cities in uh, Austria many of which have their own national landmark that represents that particular city. This does happen to be the most populated city at a population I think exceeding 1.7 million. So very well researched, uh, very well done, very well composed. Now this is a gourmand release from the house with a unique twist and uh, I will get a little bit more in detail about that later on but what I mean pretty much is that you imagine yourself taking a walk from the peaceful Danube, you're walking in the heart of the city, right around where the uh, amusement park featuring the national landmark of the city is, and that's displayed right here on the front of the bottle. It's a Ferris wheel. Um, so you're taking a walk around the city life, and you're taking a seat at a local cafe, and you get the fresh cut grass from the surrounding atmosphere, you get a few florals or flowers growing wildly in the surrounding atmosphere as well, and a little bit of mint. So you sit down at the cafe with a good friend of yours and the waiter or waitress serves you a pastry. Now that pastry is sweetened with vanilla, chocolate, and a little bit of licorice up on top just to spice it up. So you get a little bit of the smell of each, the surrounding atmosphere and the pastry in front of you. And that's pretty much supposed to capture the essence of Vienna. So it is a gourmand, but with a unique twist. And we'll get a little bit more in detail about that later on. But next up, we have the presentation for Vienna by The Scent of Departure. Here we have the presentation for Vienna by The Scent of Departure. First up, we have the bottle, and uh, this fragrance actually does not come with a box. It does come with a clear plastic uh, protective sleeve that envelops the entire bottle. Um, but again, I don't think it's part of the presentation, so it was not worthy of a mention. But here in the front, I do have to mention that this portion is made out of a very thick and durable acrylic and this bottom portion is glass, but it's very well done, very well constructed, uh, given the resources available to the company. Here at the top, we have the name of the house written, uh, the scent of departure, right under it, we have the international abbreviation for the city. Uh, so if you're in an airport and you're looking for your departure gate, uh, this is the abbreviation that's likely to appear on the overhead marquee, which will lead you in the direction of your gate. So very well done. 
very well researched. Right here below the atomizer, we do get a UPC code, a little faux UPC code right behind the graphic here, which is supposed to be evocative of the ones that you find on the stickers that are attached to the handles of your suitcase or luggage right before they're uh, thrown on the conveyor belt. So very well done. And overlapping that graphic, you do have an image of the uh, recent rad, which is a 212 foot roller coaster located in the heart of Vienna, which is also supposed to represent the city of Vienna and is considered a national landmark. Many people do uh, consider it a representation of the city and vice versa. On the bottom here, you do have the name of the city and the abbreviation once more, and the concentration here at the top, Eau de Toilette. On the back here, you have the name of the house, the abbreviation again, uh, a little bit of a description on the house itself the concentration, the ingredients, a real UPC code for the sale of this particular fragrance, and a description on this particular fragrance. So this one is on Vienna, of course. And then at the bottom here, you have the serial number, mine is 1B1111. So, and on the top here, you have a little bit of sticker that says buy air in kind of an iridescent sheen. So very well done. I think everything about this fragrance really works well in contributing to the concept that this uh, house aimed to convey. And last up, we have the atomizer. And this one uh, works fairly well. It's not the best in the game, but it gets the job done. And it's easy to over apply on this one. And that was the uh, presentation for Vienna by the scent of departure. Now, as far as the smell goes for Vienna by the scent of departure, I sprayed the fragrance on my left hand about a half hour ago, so I'm not quite into the dry down yet, but uh, the top notes have evaporated. Now, from what I remember, there is a bit of lemon in the opening of this fragrance. Um, that lemon comes across pretty clear, although it's not as pronounced as other ingredients in this fragrance are, I would say. Um, but yes, the uh, lemon note to me, especially upon the initial application, is quite evident. And I believe there's also a little bit of bergamot. The lemon is really what shines through and really is uh, very discernible and noticeable to my nose. So it opens up with that citrus element, um, but again, it's not as pronounced as some of the other notes in this fragrance are. The one note that really comes across very clear, especially more so in the opening than in the dry down of this fragrance, is mint. Uh, you do get a lot of mint from this fragrance, which is why I say this is a unique twist on the gourmand uh, genre that this fragrance is supposed to fall under. Uh, and I do think that it indeed falls under that genre. So you are gonna get a bit of licorice, actually a lot of licorice in the opening of this fragrance. Now star anise or anise if you prefer that pronunciation is uh, also listed as an ingredient in this fragrance. Um, to be honest, I don't think it really comes across as strong as the licorice does. So it opens up with a little bit of lemon a lot of licorice and a great deal of mint as well. But again, just because I think the licorice is so spicy, it just comes across much stronger than the mint does. The mint might very well be more concentrated in this fragrance than the licorice is. It's just that the licorice comes across smelling much stronger than the mint does. Now, I do think that the mint is working in a unique way in this fragrance. It sort of works in a sense that it tones down the licorice. The licorice, uh, from what I know in my experience and other people who I've spoken with and interacted with, uh, could come across as being very harsh for people. There are people who I know have swapped away or sold bottles of fragrances that contain licorice in it just because the licorice was too harsh to their nose or they just can't imagine wearing them. I do have to offer uh, this as a disclaimer. I think this is an excellent fragrance for somebody who is trying to get into not necessarily licorice based fragrances, but fragrances containing licorice, but doesn't want to start off with a heavy hitter. Doesn't want to start off with say, Al Masculin by Lolita Lempica or Body Kuros by Yves Saint Laurent. Doesn't want to start off with a fragrance that's too heavy on the licorice. Uh, definitely uh, Al Masculin, the former being an excellent example. This one, I think there's so much going on in this fragrance that it kind of serves to counteract the sweetness just because there's so many other elements in the composition really working to give this one a unique personality overall it's a very full-bodied composition so you open up with a little bit of mint uh, again it might very well be the most concentrated note in this fragrance uh, it just does not supersede the licorice in my opinion the licorice does come across quite more prominently than the mint does Another thing that I think is very worthy of a mention is that there are a great deal of florals in this fragrance. 
the florals are quite strong. Um, again, nothing supersedes that licorice, although it is toned down and accentuated in different ways because of the other notes that it's paired and coupled with. Um, but I do think that the floral notes in this fragrance will give the uh, fragrance a little bit of a feminine character. Um, so yes, this is uh, marketed or labeled as a unisex fragrance. I think it's geared more toward the feminine crowd. Okay, now I do have to say that one positive thing about this fragrance, and it's actually one of the things that's quite enjoyable to me about this fragrance, is that you can definitely smell the florals in this fragrance. I can definitely smell the florals in this fragrance, but I think that they are so well balanced that it's kind of hard to discern or pinpoint what those individual floral notes are. I can't tell if they're white florals, I can't tell if they're red florals, I can't tell if it's jasmine or magnolia, just because they're working together so well uh, to kind of just give it, um, you know, a solid, consistent, very uniform floral character to this fragrance. But again, not stronger than that licorice. It's still quite evident, and I think that the licorice does persist very well into the mid of this fragrance. The cool mint, not so much. I would say that about an hour later, the mint more or less just disappears, uh, completely evaporates, and is not noticeable at all. The, li uh, the licorice definitely persists uh, very well into the mid. Now, it could also very well be that the anise, star anise, is kicking in because it is listed as a mid note in this fragrance. Um, it's just that they both have quite of a similar smell just because they're both sweet, but they're both that spicy type of sweetness. So it might not necessarily be the licorice, it might be the uh, star anise kicking in into the mid of this fragrance, but again, it's hard to pinpoint just because it is very well balanced in that aspect of the composition as well. So again, very well done with this fragrance. Now, one thing that does peek its head through a little bit more as you transition over into the base, and I think it's very well worthy of a mention, is chocolate note. There is a chocolate note uh, underlying in this fragrance, in the base of this fragrance, that I think certainly contributes to the gourmand elements of this fragrance. So it's a gourmand, uh, it's a gourmand in the sense that it utilizes uh, star anise, licorice, chocolate, and a little bit of vanilla as well. I do have to say that I was kind of hoping that the vanilla would be a little bit more concentrated. Yes, that is a traditional means of sweetening up a fragrance. And I do appreciate vanilla when it is used in fragrances. I know that there are people who are completely against vanilla in fragrances. They would uh, opt a, a different route, one where a fragrance is sweet not using vanilla. Um, but I actually love vanilla. I'm a very big fan of the note and the way that it's used in fragrances. Um, I do, however, wish that it was a little bit more concentrated in this fragrance. I, I think it would have made the composition a little more full-bodied, but again, it's a very, it has a full body uh, the way it is, and it's a very well-composed fragrance, and the chocolate note is definitely more concentrated than anything in the base. Um, you do have woodsy notes uh, listed as a uh, base note in this fragrance. I don't get a lot of that. I don't get a lot of wood notes in this fragrance, so I do have to throw that out there but the chocolate is certainly evident. That's one thing that I could say uh, definitely starts to peek its head through in the base of the fragrance, but it is a bit noticeable in the opening of the fragrance too. Not necessarily when the, you know, licorice and the citrus notes are attacking, you know, your olfactory receptors, but give it about a half hour. A half hour into this fragrance, the chocolate really starts to come through and it's just an excellent example of non-linearity. This is an excellent example of a non-linear fragrance and you are going to get quite a bit of a scent development, uh, especially when you apply this on your skin, not very much on your clothing. I have tried applying this to the clothing uh, just because it's a light colored liquid so I felt safe in that sense but um, you're definitely going to get quite a bit of a scent progression when you apply this on your skin so very well done from the house. So even if it, the opening is a bit harsh to you, I would say to give this one a chance. I know some people say, you know what, I don't want to sit past the opening. If I don't like it in the opening, then you know what? I'm not going to like it at all. I think that this is one of the fragrances that is kind of worth um, waiting for it to develop. And another thing that's worthy of a mention is that there is rhubarb uh, listed in this fragrance. Now, I'm not familiar with rhubarb um, as a note per se. Um, I do, I have gotten my nose around other fragrances that utilize rhubarb as a note, um, but all I know is that it is a, a, a plant um, it's actually categorized as a fruit, uh, believe it or not, 
in the United States. It was categorized as a vegetable. Now it's categorized as a fruit. And it just contributes to an herbaceous quality. Now, so you are going to get the mint, you're going to get the rhubarb, and you're going to get just a little bit of uh, like a fresh green, fresh cut grass accord in the base of this fragrance. But again, um, it's not anything that's really worthy of a mention. Like I, like I said, the woodsy notes are listed as a base note in this fragrance. Um, don't really come across, don't really shine through. I don't think that's worthy of a mention. Uh, there are also... Um, the rhubarb note, of course, is not worthy of a mention either, but definitely the mint, the chocolate, the licorice, possibly even the star anise in the mid of this fragrance, and certainly the florals. Uh, the florals are heavy hitters in this fragrance, um, so yes, if you are conscious about wearing a fragrance that could come across as being a little bit feminine, I would say that this is one to avoid. Nevertheless, this is an excellent fragrance for a gourmand, especially an interpretation of a gourmand fragrance with a unique twist at it. Very well done from the house. So with that being said, let's move on to the rating for Vienna by The Scent of Departure. Now, as far as the rating goes for Vienna by The Scent of Departure, first up we have uniqueness and overall smell, and I gave this fragrance an 8 out of 10. An 8 out of 10 because uh, there aren't too many other fragrances in my collection that I could really compare this one to. Uh, I did mention All Masculine by Lolita uh, Lempica. I do think that the compositions are similar in the sense that they're both heavy on the spicy sweet characteristics like the licorice and the star anise. However, I do think that this one is a unique twist on the gourmand genre that this fragrance seems to fall under, especially with the you know, fresh cut grass accord in the base, the rhubarb note up on top, and also the mint note. Uh, and the florals, uh, of course, in this fragrance do work very well in giving this one a unique twist on the gourmand uh, genre that this fragrance seems to fall under. Again, um, I think this is a very full-bodied fragrance, but had a few more notes in the composition of this fragrance been just a bit more concentrated, I think that they would have contributed to giving this one a fuller body. Um, I do love the small overall, but I saw a few notes listed as ingredients that my nose wasn't really able to pick up or didn't come across as too concentrated to my nose, uh, namely being coffee and cinnamon in the mid of this fragrance, a few woodsy notes in the base, and I also wish the vanilla was a bit more concentrated and uh, had the rhubarb been a bit more concentrated up on top, I think that would have contributed to giving this fragrance a fuller body. And of course, the base notes would contribute to giving this fragrance a bit better of a longevity, especially had they uh, concentrated a fixative in this fragrance a bit more. I think it really would have uh, done something very good for this fragrance. But again, I love the smell. It's an excellent composition overall, and I'm uh, quite a fan of it. So 8 out of 10 for a unique smell, uh, uniqueness and overall smell. And next up, we have longevity and I gave this fragrance a 7 out of 10. A 7 out of 10 because, yes, it is an eau de toilette concentration, so I was expecting 6 to, uh, I would say 4 to 6 hours, so 7 hours is just a bit above average, so I give this one a 7 out of 10. I feel that that's a great it deserves. Again, it's 19% um, essential oils, it's 81% alcohol by volume, so it's not too highly concentrated, but it performs um, par, you know, the way that it's supposed to perform. So 7 out of 10 for longevity, 6 out of 10 for projection. A 6 out of 10 just because this is a fragrance that I was expecting to project a little bit more just because a few of the notes in the opening did come across pretty loud and pretty dominant. Um, but I only got about 2.5 to 3 hours of projection from this fragrance, which I guess is in the average range given the concentration. Um, but again, I do think that it could have projected just a little bit more had it had a little bit of, more of a boost uh, from the base notes of this fragrance. So 6 out of 10 for projection. Next up we have versatility and I gave this fragrance a 7 out of 10. Um, I think it's a versatile fragrance in the regard that it's an excellent night out fragrance. So you can wear it to a club, you can wear it to a party, you can wear it to a bar. Um, it is marketed as a unisex fragrance. I do think it requires a certain personality to be able to pull this fragrance off if you're a guy. Um, but because it's so heavy on the florals, I think this is geared more in the direction of a feminine crowd. So this is more of a feminine fragrance um, just because of the floral notes. But again, um, it could be worn by anyone. I do think that this is a unisex fragrance just geared a little bit more in the direction of the feminine crowd. Um, but I really can't imagine anyone wearing this to a semi-formal or on a semi-formal occasion. So those are two social scenarios that this fragrance cannot be worn in. 
But again, I do think that this is a year-round fragrance. I think the gourmand elements really allow this fragrance to perform very well in the colder weather, like the ones that we've been having here in northern New Jersey. And I do think that the you know, earthy elements and the green elements of this fragrance will make it very appropriate for the spring and the summer seasons as well. So this is a year-round fragrance, so I gave this one a 7 out of 10 for versatility. And then last up we have presentation, and I gave it an 8 out of 10. I think that it's a neat little presentation. We already tackled that. Very well done. The atomizer isn't the best in the game, but that's really no big deal. You can just sneak in an extra spray or two. So an 8 out of 10 for presentation. And I think that it's a neat little concept and they fulfilled it with the presentation of this fragrance. And then that brings this fragrance to an overall rating or an average rating of 7.2 out of 10. So there you have it. That was my, uh, that was my review of Vienna by The Scent of Departure. As always, thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. It would be greatly appreciated. This has been Stephen with another fragrance review from Rattle Essence, and thanks again.